hello there. They tell me at the time of this recording, I'm about to hit 20,000 subscribers on this channel, which is insane. Thanks to all the brave souls who click the subscribe button knowing that all they're gonna get is more of my increasingly incoherent rambling about Teen Wolf. Seriously though, thank you. In honor of this milestone, I sat down and looked through the comments for your most frequently asked questions and came up with a few of the most F.A. of the FAQs. Today, we're covering Mr. Douglas, also why Scott's eyes flashed red that one time in season one, and if there's time, I'll do a couple of more of the most popular viewer questions. I'm starting with the most asked question with the least satisfying answer, so we'll just go ahead and get that out of the way. A lot of folks want to know about Garrett Douglas and just what is the deal with him being part lion, part wolf, and part ghost rider. So he came out with the power of an alpha, a low image, and a ghost rider. The ghost rider bits come from soaking in that dread doctor tube for 70 years. He absorbed a lot of that dimensional energy from the rider's whip and that allowed him to use their weapons. However, despite what Liam and Theo said, that alone didn't make him as powerful as a Ghost Rider. For example, he couldn't open their portals and he couldn't make people forget him or forget the people he zapped away like Corey. The Alpha Werewolf thing is pretty simple. We get that because it's central to the show. Anyway, it's really the lion part that most people are asking about. He's a low in Mitch. What the hell is a Lowenmensch? It's part wolf, part lion. In German, they call him a Lowenmensch, or literally lion man or lion person. The name comes from this little statue discovered in a German cave back in 1939 at the height of the Nazi regime and just before the start of World War II. It was carved about 40,000 years ago by a person who would have been a member of a hunter-gatherer level society, and as such, the Lowenmensch is not connected to any known religion or cultural myths. There are no legendary feats of strength or mystical abilities associated with this thing. It's just a hunk of carved ivory that kind of looks like a person with a lion's head. This thing has no backstory. It's just got a name that was tacked onto it by some museum guys. Now, there have been a few lion-headed characters in cultures that came tens of thousands of years after this statue was carved. There was a Roman cult that included the imagery, as did Zoroastrianism, but the character in Teen Wolf isn't related to either of those. It's directly from this little German statue. So how do I know that? I know because I asked. Speaking of speaking of of, of myths, the Lowenmensch, which isn't technically a myth, it's it's a, yeah. a literal statue that was found, and everybody supposes there must have been a myth. That was all Will and Eric Watts. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's not like a big Lowenmensch subplot that's going to come out somewhere. No. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> I remember coming into the writers' room and going, "Wait, guys, he's a lion." <laughs> and, like, and I was like, sure, okay, great. I apologize for braying like a donkey during that interview. I think I'd had a couple of glasses of wine at that point. So, Eric Wallace was one of the executive producers on Teen Wolf in season six and had spent part of his young life on a U.S. Army base in Germany. In the 80s, there was a bit of a stir about the statue being reassembled and restored, and that's when Eric probably learned about the Lowenmensch but we still don't know why he and staff writer Will Wallace included this as part of the Douglas backstory. I mean, it didn't really show up on screen as anything special. Okay, I admit his crazy ass final face does look a little cat-like and he could bite through people's skulls. But to me, that doesn't necessarily scream lion parts. Maybe I'm missing something. Eric Wallace is now the head guy over at the CW's Flash, so I can't get in touch with him very easily. But I have reached out to Will and will do an updated Lowenmensch video if he says there's some amazing Lion Man stuff that I'm just not noticing. 
Now, don't get mad. I did warn you that one would not be satisfying. I hope I can make up for that with this very satisfying explanation of why Scott's eyes looked red in that one scene in Night School back in Season 1. Yeah, a lot of people use this as a sign that Scott was always an alpha. And there's a small grain of truth there in that Jeff Davis knew early on he wanted Scott to head up a pack, and after the fact he did say this was foreshadowing that. But in universe, the reason Scott's eyes flash red is because Peter is exerting a tiny bit of control over Scott's werewolf side. I've called this a psychic link before, but I've soured a bit on that wording because people take it so literally. It's more like when Alphas roar and other werewolves have an involuntary reaction to hearing that sound. <sighs> In Peter's case, his roar spoke to Scott's werewolf side, the part of himself that Scott barely has under control at this point. The sound awakened that bloodlusty instinct of the werewolf. It's actually a testament to how strong Scott was even then that he was able to resist his animal side and shake off the urge to kill. This next one seems weird to me. I mean, we had a whole season explaining it, but I still get folks asking why the Ghost Riders took people away. The answer is simple. It's just what they do. It's what they've always done. In the real world, the story of the wild hunt or the wild chase is part of cultures all over Europe. There are as many different interpretations as there are countries, but they all include a supernatural army riding on a storm. In the Jeff Davis universe, the Wild Hunt rides that storm around the world, just taking regular folks. They are a literal force of nature that's become a part of folklore. They got stuck in Beacon Hills due to Kira's power surge in Season 5, and they just kept on taking people. Once you see them, you get taken. That's the rule. But it's not because they don't like you or that you're a bad person or something logical like that. They are just a force of nature, like a tornado or a hurricane. Now, some people might assign motives to those things. There are none. They don't have any explanation or agenda. They simply are. We can see how they work, but the why is not a question that anyone can answer. Thanks for watching. There's a lot to unpack here, so go down and like and share your thoughts. Maybe join the nearly 20,000 Teen Wolf fans that have already subscribed to this channel. I'll see you next time we go back to Beacon Hills.